All right, welcome everyone, um, and thanks for coming to my talk. Um, this is a lightning talk. I originally presented it or submitted it as a full-length talk, so I try to shrink it down. Um, not sure how successful. So let me start with the clarification. I call it this, but it should really be called this, because um, at the time we submitted it, generative AI really wasn't, there wasn't much video generation and, you know, picture generation yet. It was all about, you know, text and text completion and, and chatbots and things like that. So I apologize for any kind of false hopes you might have had. So, but let's talk about um, what we can do um, with large language models and how to serve them um, at scale. So my name is Christian Kardner. I work for IBM. Um, I've been a software developer in the field of um, uh, machine learning, um, working on open source projects um, in Kubeflow specifically, um, K Kubeflow pipelines on Tekton um, and KSurf. And most recently, I've worked on um, projects like KKIT and TGIS, which I plan to introduce in the next few minutes. Let's start with some of the challenges um, that, that come with serving large language models um, that are quite unique compared to the previous generation of models that, that we're serving with KSERF, for example. So large language models, as the name implies, are huge. Um, and usually, they require GPUs. Um, and oftentimes these models are so big that they can't fit on a single GPU, um, specifically exceeding the GPU memory. And then the very nature of them as the, the, the iterative autoregressive decoding mechanism um, really doesn't work well with parallelization, you know, which is the main benefit of using GPUs. And then of course you have variable length input and then you have to manage the whole state of the, the context. And I linked a very good paper on some of those challenges at the bottom here. Okay, let's quickly give an overview over um, KSERF. KSERF started as Kubeflow Serving, and it's really the, the predominant serving solution um, for AI models on Kubernetes. And it used to be part of the um, Kubeflow um, um, package, the bundle, when you downloaded Kubeflow, um, KF Serving, KSERF was part of it. It has a very active um, and very diverse um, open source community with contributions from you know, co big companies like Bloomberg, Google, IBM, NVIDIA, Selden, and many more. And um, it prides itself as being scalable and performant, and it uses um, Knative and Istio um, to do many, many of the things it can do. And then, of course, you have you know, things you would expect like pre-processing, post-processing, um, monitor and explainability, or canary rollouts, for example. Um, KSERF supports m most of the most popular um, machine learning frameworks, and it does that by providing um, serving runtimes that are kind of like pre-configured that you can use to serve your models. And all you need is you know, a few lines of YAML code or a few lines of Python code if you use the KSERV SDK. Now, most recently, um, new features that came into KSERV for LLM support um, are the new TorchServ Torch um, V08 runtime. Um, that supports, you know, large language models that can't fit on a single GPU using Hugging Face, Accelerate, um, and DeepSpeed to split your model over several GPUs called sharding. And then there's a dedicated um, VLLM runtime. Um, and I'll go into more details about what the nifty features are there, but they, they really have a very high throughput using that. And in the little diagram there, you can see that uh, the throughput using continuous batching page attention is really exceptional. All right, but let me go back a step and, and talk about the text generation inference server. This is a, um, a project that was released by Hugging Face, and Hugging Face is using that um, to serve their large language models. Um, and I think most recently, um, they're using that to, for their hugging chat. And so there are several innovative features that, that came into this here, um, including flash detention, uh, flash detention and tensor parallelism, and, and page detention. Um, I'm running low on time, so I'm gonna skip for the next one. Um, the problem with um, TGI was is that um, IBM last year had a partnership with Hugging Face, and then a few months later, um, they flipped the license on us. And so the work that we've done to contribute to TGI and the, the work we needed to do to consume it internally now you know, was on an empty footing. And so we were able to continue the work on our fork and used the old Apache 2.0 license that was available until, whoops, until, you know, before version 01. And then we added a few optimizations that, that you know, worked for us in production. And, but it's basically, uh, you know, very similar adaptation. There's a great talk by Nick Hill, uh, who is our technical lead on the project. 
and that talk really explains all of the optimizations and why what was done what what the page attention uh, algorithm does and, and the continuous, continuous batching is really informative. I highly recommend it. Um, now, KSERF and, and uh, TGI or VLLM, they are great for serving models, but as a developer, um, it's still hard to really, you know, integrate um, those large language models in your application because most developers don't have the background um, and they don't want to work with tensors as input and outputs. And so we created that project, um, KKIT, which allows gives a layer of abstraction so developers can focus on the actual the, the model inputs and outputs they want to work with which for large language models is text um, and then uh, the layer of abstraction also allows to swap out models and and then you know to develop your application independently of ver different versions of the models um, and hugging face is a few concepts that make that even easier uh, with modules and, and data models and so that you can you know S switch out your runtimes for training. You have different runtimes for inferencing, like you see here, teaches is one inference runtime. And then your actual data model focuses on a task you want to achieve, like you know some kind of natural language processing, image generation, whatever your task is, you can then swap out you know, similar or, or equivalent um, functionality underneath without changing your application code. Um, one of the creators, or two of the creators um, of KKIT are actually here in the room, so if you have questions, you come and find us. And they have a great demo. Um, I call it Kai Cat Demo because it's always fun to work with cat pictures. Um, and one of the demos is, is um, analyzing contents of, you know, contents of a picture, and it works really great, so go check that out. All right, so how do we put this all together? Um, so with Red Hat, OpenShift AI, uh, which is used by IBM What's Next AI, um, all of those technologies are you know, playing their part. We're using KServe. Um, to handle the actual model deployment, uh, TGIS as our serving backend and inference engine, engine and KKIT is the toolkit um, that allows us to, to handle the lifecycle of the TGIS process and gives us the inference endpoints. And it's all built on top of Kubernetes uh, and Red Hat OpenShift, so we get all the scalability and performance that come with, uh, with Knative and Istio and, and the other technologies bundled. And there's a great a blog post here um, that are linked from Red Hat that explain how, does, how all of these technologies work together and create a seamless user experience. All right, I'm way over time, um, so I thank you for attending this talk. And if you have any questions, go come find us. There's a bunch of us developers sitting in the second row here, happy to answer questions. Thank you.